Chuck here, KK6USY for Ham Radio Adventures. I got a lot of comments back on my uh, little 2.7 ounce uh, infed half wave antenna, and I want to appreciate all the comments. It, it really helps, and, and, and a few people actually shared some of their builds also, so that's great. So, but maybe that, that the antenna is not what you're looking for. Maybe you're looking for something that will do 100 watts. Well, stick with me today. We're going to show you this one, this build. Basically the same antenna, just a bigger toroid mount into this uh, winder. So let's get on with the video. Okay, so this is the, in, we're gonna build a 49 to one transformer again has your two primary turns, which are here, one and two. And then you got three, four, five, six, seven, across goes eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 is out the bottom. We will cut this at uh, 67 feet for 40 to 10. And we are using 14 gauge and alloy wire. All right, that should do that. So today we're gonna build a uh, another infed half wave. Uh, we're going to do it off of uh, one of the smoking apes winders that he sent me. We're going to use an FT140. Uh, mix 43. And that's this. And we'll probably put it somewhere around here. And uh, so it'll be pretty portable. And then... Um, this should do this should do 100 watts for sideband that's pretty much all i ever do for portable anyhow it's just sideband so it might do cw but uh you may not be able to use it continuously so we're going to use today is um some 14 gauge and this is magnet wire again uh, enamel coated Okay, let me uh, move some stuff around. Let's move that out of the way. All right, we're going to, uh, I've got 38 inches of wire, of the magnet wire. Got it bent over at six inches. That should give us plenty. So we're gonna put this in a drill. We're going to do just like we did last time. We're going to twist this thing. Let's see if we're in the camera. There we go. And on this, these vice grips to hold it, since this wire is a little heavier duty, it's hard to hold. But um, I put some tape, and that's what the green stuff is, just to kind of protect the enamel. And, and when I do this, I kind of put a little tension back, uh, pulling each, each side away from each other just so it uh, goes straight. That should be good. Okay, so we're gonna put our first first one in. We're gonna it goes over the top like this. Let's just put a nice let's just put a nice bend in this thing before we even start. So it sticks out. Probably half eh, hour, but we'll pass the uh, tool right about a three quarters of an inch there, it looks like. Now you just want to try and bend this stuff around as tight as you can. I'm probably going to speed this up. I'll do a few rounds and then I'll uh, speed it up for you guys. Nobody, nobody really wants to sit here and watch me wrap this, I don't think. So there's that first turn. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven goes underneath and over. So that's eight. 
That's actually 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I got one too many. So there we go. And the bottom one comes out that way there. Start at the top and comes out at the bottom. Okay, I did notice that I missed a turn. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that's eight. So nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. All right. It's not the prettiest <laughs> wind I've ever done, but uh, it'll work. All right, we we're so I already, already kind of soldered this one into there. And now I'm just kind of tinning the, um, I'm going to put one from here to here. So I'm going to try and tin this. It's still just a little bit long, but let's see. We'll just bend it around, hopefully. There we go. Now the capacitor has to go from there. I'm going to hide it back in there like that. So let's get that one first. I don't care where you solder, the smoke always comes at you. Okay, that's in there. What I'm trying to do is kind of keep this out of the way of when I wrap the wires around. And what I'll do now is I'll, I'll put a couple wire ties around this to hold this nice and solid. So I'll be back. I'll, uh, I'll probably drill a couple holes and we'll get this tied down. Then we're going to drill. We'll drill a hole for the wires to come through here. It'll probably go down, back up and then back down and then that'll be your strain relief also so let me do that all right so as you guys can see i put uh, a couple wire ties on here one there one there i've uh, drilled holes in here and i've wrapped the wound so this is like no tension on the on the actual solder joints so we're going to solder this up now And the wire we're using is uh, Polystealth 22 gauge. Actually, I think I like the 22 gauge. I think I might actually prefer it. I haven't used it yet, though. So, But it seems pretty nice. And it's, 
still pretty small. Okay, now what I'll do when that cools is I'll, I'm going to bend this down to where it's down close to here. So everything, everything is out of the way and for when you wind it, it's going to be a little bulky right here in the middle, but that's, that's okay. Maybe I should have put it out here. I don't know. Okay, so uh, so here's the uh, pretty much finished antenna. That's with uh, 67, roughly 67 feet of uh, that poly stealth wire. I put a little bit of uh, heat shrink here. And eventually, I'm going to go and put on all these open areas here. I'll take and uh, put some um, of that liquid tape on there like I did on the last antenna. But uh, it should work pretty good. Let's see what it weighs. Actually, let's see what we got here. I think this is the right way for you guys. Okay, and I think that is... Um, we're in ounces right there. Let's just set it on there. So 6.10 ounces. And that's a hundred and let's say one hundred seventy-three grams. It's not too not too bad. All right, let's, let me just show you what I got here. I just got this attached to the fence. I don't think it's close enough to make a problem there. I just got a bungee corded. I usually would probably but take it off a little farther, but I didn't have much with me today. And then there's the back side where it's connected. Okay, and then. If you look at the wire, hard to see. This is really tiny. It's, I think, a 22 gauge, but it's still tiny. Or 20 gauge, something like that. And I just have my coax running. I think it's about 30 feet of coax. So then, what I'm doing over here is just using my spike. And this is a, uh, let's see, pack tenna. I broke this thing so it's about 20 22 feet and there it is up there got a little bend to it because I do have tension on it so and if I wanted to I could pull a you know a, a, a guy wire back but I haven't needed it even in the wind I didn't have much problem it's a nice little park out here and the trees are starting to bloom already as you, as you can see in uh, that kind of purplish pink over there it's a actually it's a soccer field all right let me uh, let me pick this down and do some adjusting okay so what I did this time is I I shortened it six inches but I cut a foot of wire off so I don't have the uh, bend down I don't want too much wire at the end here so I've got it set at uh, 30 for the scan all the way across the bands and then I got 15.00 so let's uh, Let's do a scan real quick. I like seeing those dips. Okay, so let's just, uh, so we're at somewhere in 14 something. It's 14.4 right there. So let's just see what that is. 1.16 at 14.4. Okay, let's change the range. Let's change the range to like... Okay, so now let's just do... At 14.4 we'll do another scan. Okay, so I'd say on, let's go up just a little bit, 14,440. So now I'm just a little bit short probably, probably because I cut the foot. But I've got, I can I can bring it back a little bit. So what I'll probably do is bring it back half of what I, well, let's look at a couple other bands. Let's look, let's look at, uh, 
Okay. Okay, let's just do a scan of that. So it shows just a little below 250. So there's 210. Let's see what that looks like. 210 or 1.3. So still a little on the low side on 40. So we may be in a good sweet spot here. Let's uh, let's hit eight. I know some of you guys want to see what everything is. So we're at 4.5 on X, 1.31 SWR, and 64 ohms. Let's just go. Let's go up and see what it looks like. So we're at 230. So we're 1.2. Oh yeah, we're getting. So it's at 7.250 shows, uh, oh, that's better than I thought earlier, 1.33. We might be good here. So that's getting pretty close to, I think I went too far. I don't know if you guys can see that, but X is almost zero right there. Seven two forty. That's that's pretty resonant, right? That's that's good. We're gonna leave that. Let's uh, let's go back to uh, that's forty. Let's go back to one four two five zero. Oh. So one point three seven. Yeah, I could live with that. And that's not the most resonant area. It's close. Uh, let's go 21, uh, three, 300, let's just see what it looks like there, 1.7, oh yeah, that's good, I don't know the bands, I'm, I, I should have my card with me, I don't think I have it here, I keep a little cheat sheet for some of the bands I don't know as well, let's actually go back to like four, uh, 20 is really good poda and soda for me. So one four, let's just say 300. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, 1.27. I actually, I'm kind of thinking we're good here. Let's put a, let's put a 10. Okay, there's 28500 and that's 2.0 let's go to 400 that's usually where a lot of people will set a lot of times until it opens yeah 2.1 I can't, can't this is faster to just do it this way There's 2,900, 1.6. 1.5, yeah, this thing's, let's see, let's, let's just try. There's 80, 3, 8, 6, 5. Yeah, but it's not it's not cut it's not made for 80. So I could tune that with it with a decent uh, manual tuner or a good aftermarket tuner should pretty much can handle that or get it within reason. Let's try 1.800, 8500. Yeah, 4.9 on 18.5. Let's try 2400. Yeah, 3.3. I think I'm going to leave it where it's at. Because one of my bands I talked to my buddies is 07255. I just talked to them on that, 1.34. I can't, I can't fault that at all. All right, I think that's where it's going to stay right now. I'll take it home and I'll, uh, I'll take some um, heat shrink and really do, do it up nice there and uh, make sure it doesn't come apart.
Okay, this is a park. Parks on the air guy right here. He is New England. It's a pretty good signal from New England. If you can hear me. I just made a a, uh, a contact with a parks on the air to Texas, I think it was, and I got a five eight five eight. He was about a five five here. I couldn't be happier with this build. It's uh, still a pretty easy build. Uh, it's good for around 100 watts sideband, maybe a little bit less on if you're doing CW or something. You What you would do is really check the uh, toroid and see how warm it gets since it's, it's pretty near you. You saw in the video that this thing tuned up pretty, pretty good. I actually did shorten this one. I didn't save it for 80 since I'm going to try and use this with uh, maybe the 891, the 857 or my 991A at 100 watts and I, I wanted something that I, if, if I had this the 981A will tune up a little bit extra here and there because it does have the internal tuner but I want something that was not uh, always dependent on the uh, on a tuner so and this thing I mean for was it 7, 20 and 15 it's perfect and the other ones with the 991A I can touch it up okay if you like this video Hit the, uh, the like button, hit the subscribe button if you're new here, and also hit that bell and hit all so you get all future videos. This is Chuck, KK6USY, for Ham Radio Adventures. Be safe and catch you on the airwaves. 73 all.